What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back. And we are here for part one of a two-part Madden 20 finale. It's not just a pink slips finale. It's not a flashback finale. It's a Madden 20 finale. This is going to be part one of the final two videos on this channel. That is Madden 20 content. I've been working very, very hard. I will say I've over the last two days, I've probably been working on the channel for you know 18 hours plus, and it's 8:30 p.m. On Monday, you guys will probably be seeing this video 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern on Monday. That that's how like just backed up. But I want to finish this series. I don't want any loose ends. I posed the question. First of all, it seems like everyone was pretty down with me coming back to finish this with the original team that we started this flashback pink slip series with, the Houston Oilers. I mean, they're not really that particularly good. They're very old, and a lot of things need to be done. But then I posed the question: Do you want me to keep, uh, you know, the pink slips rules in effect? Or do you want me just to treat this like a five-year rebuild? And it was kind of split. Honestly, it was kind of split. I personally suggested that I would like to, you know, over this five-year rebuild, still have pink slip rules going. Every single game, I'd give you a quick recap and show you what player we won. Unfortunately, I just do not have the time to do that. Would you know this will this video is probably only gonna take me two hours to make. It's already very late. If if I had to throw in pink slip scoring and all that different stuff that would come into editing, you might tack on at min at least another hour. Um, so it's, it's just not in the cards to do that. So what we'll be doing today is we will take the other option, which is just a little bit quicker, but still will give us the completion that we are looking for. This will be a traditional five-year rebuild, rebuilding our original Flashback Pink Slips team. We have all the draft classes, so we have the 2017, 18, 19, 20 draft classes that we're going to be able to use and apply there's just unfortunately going to be no more pink slip rules unless maybe I want to get freaky in the playoffs or something like that or we go in the Super Bowl sooner than later. But uh, for this video and for this series to really happen at this point between today and tomorrow, this is really the only way it's going to happen. So if you are a little bit upset that we're not applying the pink slip rules, my sincerest apologies. But when you see what's happening behind the scenes, you'll completely understand, I hope, and uh, you'll understand my decision making. So that being said, from here on out, we are treating this as a traditional rebuild. Today, we will be doing the first two years. We'll be back tomorrow with the final three years as we catch the Houston Oilers up to present time. Looking at our roster, uh, it's probably be a little bit easier to look at it this way. We're an old team, definitely an old team. At the quarterback spot, we have Eli Manning, our original franchise quarterback with the Oilers. He's 35, you know, and if we do need his replacement over the next five years, I think James Winston could definitely be that guy. I'm not the biggest James Winston fan, but from a Madden standpoint, he's 75 superstar, only 22. So we are fairly happy with our quarterback situation. Past, future, it's good. Running back, we have Jarek McKinnon. Definitely, this is a position we want to at least add a compliment. I think McKinnon's a solid compliment back, but not a guy we want as you know our only guy, our lead back. At wide receiver, we have Garcon and Anquan Bolden, both superstar X-Factors. Obviously, on the downswing of their career, we have Devontae Adams, though. He's really solid, really nice. 23-82 with that superstar dev. We also have Josh Gordon, who we signed in free agency on the roster. So, wide receiver's not a major need, but, you know, we could still get younger at the position. Same goes for tight end. We have Jason Witten, who's an 80 X-Factor, but he's 34. Old man Witten, old cue ball Witten that we got here. Um, you know, need his successor, need his heir. Could it be Austin Hooper? Was a little bit blue-balled with his selection in the draft. I thought he was going to be a lot better. Uh, came on only 66 normal. It's going to be tough to work with, but, you know, Witten's solid for the time being. Jason Witten, Eli Manning, the old guard here in Houston. Uh, you know, I think I think they still could be productive. We have Nate Soul. I mean, the O-line also is, you know, average. Our best lineman at Dwayne Brown at 88 at Superstar. He's 31. It's, there's no way that he's going to, you know, hit that second win in his career and become an all-pro type guy. He's only going to regress at this stage, but still, at least he started from a high point. Regressing down from an 88, we can work with that. Defensively, same kind of deal, man. We got Trent Cole, X-Factor, but he's regressed down to a 70. That's not great. We got Yannick Ngakwe, who we hit on in the draft. 73, Hidden Dev is one of the better value picks of the draft. High expectations for him as a rookie here in Houston. Also, Zadarius Smith is solid. D-Tackle, we have Gerald McCoy, 85, superstar dev player. We got some young players, Michael Pierce, the rookie, Matt Ioannidis, but generally speaking, it's really the McCoy show. Still could use more depth at D-tackle. David Harris, veteran linebacker, solid for the time being. Uh, Luke Keekley, star player, face of the team. Maybe probably face of the team. At least face of the defense. Superstar X-Factor, 91 overall. Hopefully we can get him to that 99 club sooner than later. 
Uh, then we also got Jordan Hicks. A little bit of a developmental option. 71 with a star dev trait. High ceiling for sure. So I'm happy with the linebacker core. Just going to keep an eye on David Harris with that age. Into the secondary, we got Honey Badger. We signed him in free agency just because I really wanted to. Bringing him over from the Carolina Panthers. We got Kyle Fuller, who's solid. You know, two superstar corners. I'm very happy with this secondary. Hayden is okay. Serviceable as a three. Have very little depth at the corner spot. Luckily, injuries are turned off. Free safety, we have Jaquiski Tart. Average. We got Keanu Neal, who was our first round pick from the last draft. 70 with a hidden dev trade. Pairing that with Yannick Ngakwe. Very happy with how our first draft went for the Houston Oilers. And sky's the limit, man. Hopefully, those guys both have something better than a star dev. I feel optimistic that we will. Another one of the original Houston Oilers. We brought back Sebastian Janikowski to be our kicker for year 17. And Andy Lee here as a superstar punter. One of the best punters in the league. So really, really solid special teams unit. So generally speaking, I'm, I'm happy with this team. I think we should be okay, if not borderline competitive here in year one. But clearly there is still that change in the guard that's going on with our roster. With the mix of the old and young players. That I, I can't for sure predict how this first year is going to go. But hopefully it's not too rough. Way point of year one and it's rough. Thank God we're not having big slip rules. Our team would be pillaged by now. We're one and six. We're going to have a high pick. We're going to have a very, very high pick. A preview of the 2017 draft. For those of you that don't remember, I mean, you should. It's very familiar. This one had Miles Garrett. Obviously Mitchell Trubisky. Probably going to avoid that. Thankfully we don't need a quarterback. Um, got Solomon Thomas, a little bit of bust. But I mean, in terms of studs, Miles Garrett, at the pace that we're going, we're going to be the worst team. I'll probably most likely get Miles Garrett. Leonard Fournette, solid. Jamal Adams, obviously. You got uh, Christian McCaffrey, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, maybe maybe it's not. Well, technically, it's not a bad draft to be looking for a quarterback. It's just a bad draft if yeah, we're trying to keep it realistic and stick with the first quarterback that went off the board. Because we had to get Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, you know, Nick Mullins. You get Taysom Hill. Everyone knows what kind of weapon he is, you know. Or you end up getting a Trubisky or Deshaun Kaiser, and you're not very happy. But outside of that, um, we get, you know, some Derek Barnett, Malik Cooker. We got Marlon Humphrey. Definitely like that. Dory Jackson, really, really solid corner. OJ Howard, looking for that replacement potentially for Jason Witten. A guy like OJ Howard absolutely could come in and get the job done. Same with Evan Ingram. Um, Trey White, absolute baller at corner. TJ Watt, beast of an outside linebacker. It's a really, really solid draft. And I do think that if, you know, there is a silver lining to us, maybe being the worst team in the league is plenty of options, especially in that first round, to have a very, very quick turnaround to get the Houston Oilers back to being one of the premier teams in the National Football League. Conclusion of the 2016 season. I mean, thank God it was over. 4-12. and 12. Just not good. Second, oh, man, we're, and we're probably... <laughs> Gotta miss out on Miles Garrett. I'd be shocked if the Niners don't pick him up, but there's still plenty of options for us in that first round. But with the second worst team, probably deservedly. So uh, let's figure out our dev traits from that rookie class that we were pretty optimistic about. Um, well, there's most also on the defensive side. Yannick Ngakwe came out superstar dev. Keanu Neal came out star dev. Maybe that's ooh, that's a little rough. We had uh, Ioannidis star dev as well. So at least we got the superstar. At least we got that superstar in Yannick Ngakwe, which helps uh, you know, lessen the burden of the fact that we're most likely not going to be able to get Miles Garrett, who for sure is the number one player. Well, maybe not the for sure number one player. But as assuming that we're not going quarterback, we're not going to get Mahomes or Watson, probably the number one player outside of those guys, the quarterbacks, is Miles Garrett. And I would be very, very shocked if the 49ers don't pick him. But at least we got Ngakwe. Should be very, very solid for us going down the stretch. And you look at our team, where do we want to get better? Still plenty of spots. Third corner. D-tackle. Another D-end. Getting younger and a replacement for David Harris. Free safety. Pretty much anywhere on the offensive line, not Dwayne Brown. And we still probably need a replacement for Dwayne Brown. Could go tight end. Could bring a wide receiver in. Could look at running back. So plenty of options to come for this offseason. But again, I, you know, still, even though we are now treating this like a traditional rebuild, I, I never just want to go crazy in free agency. I really, especially in the this style of a video where we're using draft classes of players that we already know, if they're going to be relatively good or bad, I, I really want the importance to fall on the draft. Less so much on just spending crazy money in the, um, in the free agency period, because obviously salary cap is turned off. So we saw their depth rates. We know we suck. I guess kind of taking a peek here at the stats. Eli Manning. That's just not good enough, man. 4,000 yards, 23 touchdowns to 11 picks. Maybe sooner than later, we need to pull the plug on him and throw in Jameis Winston. Not a brutal year from Jarek McKinnon. 
almost 1,000 yards and nine touchdowns. Receiving 1,000 yards for Pierre Garçon, eight touchdowns, 806 for Devontae Adams, 7.16-4 for Jason Witten, 5.55-4 and four for Anquan Bolden. Defensively, Luke Keekley, a tackle machine with 123 tackles. We got 10 and a half sacks from David Harris because, sure. Uh, 14 TFL, 7 half sacks from Jeremy McCoy is nice production from him. Three picks, DJ Hayden, two for Honey Badger, two from rookie Keanu Neal. Uh, you know, I'm not overly disappointed. It's just more so the offense. We're the 27th offense in the league. Defensively, 26. Not good enough on either side of the ball. MVP is Adrian Peterson, the man who our Carolina Panthers won in their Super Bowl victory over the Hawaii Warriors. AP, I mean, I'm glad that we gave them the kind of weapon that they deserved. I'm glad that we're able to leave them uh, better than maybe they were, you know. I don't know. They were pretty damn good. We, the Panthers were pretty good when we left. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not like we let them high and dry. We gave them a very nice going away present from us leaving Carolina and getting them the league MVP in the ageless wonder AP. you got to be like 32 33 at this pace. He just does not slow down. Um, well, do we have any award winners, at least? Keanu Neal is Defensive Rookie of the Year. like seeing that. And that's about it, but at least it's something. One award winner here on our Houston Oilers squad. Let's get into the offseason and have a very quick turnaround from being one of the worst teams in the league to being one of the best. As we go into free agency, plenty of options like any of these big dogs would represent Really, really big upgrades to our team. I was thinking about, you know, a guy like Andre Johnson. I, I think I want to reunite him. I think I want to bring him back into the fold. I mean, one of the... Uh, he's a legend, man. He was, he was our first first-round pick. So rather than just straight up fixing our team in one offseason, I'm limiting myself to two signings. I want to bring back Andre Johnson from the nostalgia because ultimately he's still... I mean, he's a good player. Scheme fit, 83, superstar X-Factor, but he's 36. We might only be getting him on a one-year rental even though we're giving him a three-year contract. But I do want... To at least offer myself a chance to get one solid player here. And at the beginning of the later, I'm going to try and go all in here on David DeCastro. 27-89 overall superstar dev right guard. And there you go. Sometimes you swing and a miss. Even though we gave him an outrageous deal, David DeCastro clearly does not want to be a part of our Houston Rebo. You know who it is, though? He's coming home. Coming home. He's coming home. Andre Johnson is back in Houston. Will most likely be our wide receiver one. Or at least compete for that wide receiver one gig with Devontae Adams. I'm ready for the draft, man. Let's just get into it. 2017 draft is here. We have the number two overall pick. Hoping for a miracle that Miles Garrett slips past the 49ers here. But let's just get away. That most likely he won't. And he's gone. 79 overall. Miles Garrett at a position that we definitely want to try and upgrade. Oh, well, that kind of leaves us with this board. I mean, we just we already burned a pick on strong safety. Then again, I could get someone like Jamal Adams and uh, and move him to free safety and double it up. But I, I think the pick makes a whole lot of sense. If we are truly going to you know keep this whole Eli Manning, Jameis Winston dynamic, and I don't think we can give up on Jameis Winston just because we know what Jameis Winston is in real life, I think the pick that makes the most sense would be Christian McCaffrey. We have a, a solid running back in Jarek McKinnon. But Chris McCaffrey, as we know, is the best running back in the National Football League currently. I'm a huge fan, former Caucasian running back. As you can see, it's, you know, it's unique. He's a niche player, I guess. He's exotic, if you will. So, yeah, that'll be our pick. First pick at number two. Why is he only a 73? Chris McCaffrey, hidden dev, better be x -Fat. Oh, no, they're going to rob me. They're going to make McCaffrey suck, aren't they? We have the options available to us in the second round. Um, I mean, Curtis Samuel's not a bad shout if we just want to pretty much rip off the draft that the Carolina Panthers have. I mean, it would have been a good draft if we didn't get McCaffrey. Look, there's still Dalvin Cooks here in the second round at running back. Same with Joe Mixon. Uh, but as we get down here, I mean, Raekwon McMillan could be a solid shout. Zach Cunningham, solid. But, you know. Let's, let's bring back another meme. An homage to one of the channel legends of a pass Madden, Juju Smith-Kelly, wide receiver, USC. And Juju comes out 70, hit a dev. Number 21 in true talent, getting me a pick 34. I mean, obviously the name value is there. That's not that big of a finesse pick, though, as we're only roughly, you know, 13 spots ahead of where we actually were picking. So I'm happy with that. And we bring back a guy that at one point in time was huge on the channel. Only the real ones. Remember Juju Smith-Kelly. We get a free safety, John Johnson, who is, uh, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of, 
how we kind of stood up for Philadelphia in that Rams Saints game. Did that chopper stop? I Man, I always love it. So, John Johnson, free safety, number 63 in true value. Get him a pick 66. 66 normal dev. Thought maybe he could be a little bit better. It's probably because he doesn't have John Johnson the third. That's the only reason why he doesn't get that dev trait. I'm still trying to kind of, you know, solidify our linebacking core. We're, our depth's not great. We only have five linebackers total on the roster. So I'm going to use a little bit of Gator bias here and get Alex Anzalone, linebacker from Florida, 64 normal, 109 in true value, 98. Uh, it's, you know, a little bit of a reach. Not a bad reach, though. It's just solid depth for our linebacking core. In the sixth round, we're actually starting to get pretty thin at really available options here. Um, we'll... I guess we'll go Chase Rule. Yeah, I know he's a starting center right now. So because he's a starter, maybe his rating's not going to be brutal. It's hey, it's a good pick. It's barely a good pick. Still a good pick. 62 normal. Cool. Up in the seventh round. I mean, there are two running backs. We already got McCaffrey, but Eckler and Breida would bring good value. But we have the Eagles kicker, the man that helped Philly win the Super Bowl. We don't have a kicker on our roster as Sebastian Janikowski did retire. So might as well replace one big leg kicker with another. And we will get Jake Elliott out of Memphis, number 68 in true value at 202. 78 kick power? On a guy that kicked like a 63-yarder to beat the Giants? That's terrible! Cap time, I mean, Jerry Smith, it's not a bad draft. I mean, the name values are, are, are solid. Obviously, it's going to be headline two, Pac-12 uh, talents here. Christian McCaffrey and Juju Smith-Kelly. Looking at how the rest of the draft kind of went for the landscape of the NFL. We saw Miles Garrett go there. At the classic Dallas. <laughs> Joel Adams went to the Minnesota Vikings. We got Lattimore going to the Redskins. Um, pretty weird ratings here. Mahomes is now the quarterback of the Denver Broncos. Adoree Jackson going to the Colts. We got Marlon Humphrey going to the Patriots. Gary on Conley going to Green Bay. TJ Watt going to the Dolphins. Deshaun Watson is now the quarterback in Hawaii. Pair that with Chip Kelly. Good God. Trey White going to the Giants. Who was the uh, highest overall player? Was it Miles Garrett? Yeah. No, it wasn't. Marshawn Lattimore. These ratings need to get, I don't know if they need to get adjusted or not. Maybe I'm just a little crabby. Alvin Kamara went to the Green Bay Packers there in the second round, 75. Dalvin Cook going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, we got Shaq Griffin going to the Vikings. Fourth round here. Ooh. Whoa. Okay. George Kittle's only a 69. Oh. He's going to the Raiders. Um, all right. Well, that's the draft. Let's get into year two. So we are now in year two of the five-year rebuild of the Houston Oilers after the draft. And we've regressed badly. I think we were at 80 overall last year. Now we're just somehow a 77. McCaffrey is going to be our new starting running back. Devontae Adams, clearly our new wide receiver one. But at least we're, you know, a little bit of nostalgia here. Bringing back Andre Johnson. Pairing that with Pierre Garçon, Josh Gordon, and the rookie Juju Smith-Kelly. O-line still not great. Not, not very good. Pretty annoying that we missed on David DeCastro in free agency. At least Jason Wynn didn't regress too, too bad. Defense looks a little more promising. Um, D-line is really solid here. Big opportunity for Zedaria Smith to develop into a starter. Uh, obviously, in Gawkway, Sky is the limit. Really happy with our secondary. Pat Robinson, Honey Badger, and Fuller. Neal uh, was the defensive rookie of the year. Got a nice little plus two before the offseason started. So he's starting as a 76 David Harris didn't regress too, too bad. Jordan Hicks went up a dev trade from star to a superstar. And obviously, Luke Keekley is one of the best players in the National Football League. So, we were the second worst team last year. Hopefully, we can get some form of momentum here to finish out part one of this rebuild here in year two. But optimism, I have no idea. I cannot predict. I'm going to say six, seven wins, somewhere in that range. But we could surprise. And Eli Manning could you know, have that one final hurrah. Because he might retire. This might be at least 36. Could be the end of the line for all Eli. Midway point here, year two of the 2017 season. And <laughs> um, I think we might need to take the old gunslinger out. One, five, and one. Uh, he's, he's just not playing to that rating. He's not playing to the risk. Go Jameis Winston. See if it adds a spark to the offense. McCaffrey's dev trait has been unveiled. He is a superstar. Uh, rightfully so. Still nothing for Juju. He's not getting a whole lot of reps right now, unfortunately. But... Uh, let's, make, let's see if Jameis Winston can kind of turn this around. E if not, I mean, we have the 2018 draft. Baker Mayfield. We got Saquon Barkley. Denzel Ward. Looking at what we need, I mean, honestly, I could just say screw it and get Quentin Nelson. Quentin Nelson might be pound for pound still the best player from this draft. Can't go wrong with Saquon. Can't go wrong Denzel Ward. 
Uh, Roquan Smith's legit. Minka Vitavea's legit. Tremaine Edmonds, Derwin James, Jair Alexander, Leighton Vanderesh. There's not really any possible way. Hell, we could even go Lamar if we really wanted to. But there's no way you could really mess up with that first round pick. Uh, plenty of options for us to really improve our team. But right now, I'm more so focused just how bad we are. And, and making this change with Eli Manning, I think, is going to be is going to be important. Now, we don't have salary cap on, so that being said, if Eli wants to be a backup here, a valuable backup, kind of what he was in New York with Daniel Jones in real life, by all means. If he doesn't want to do that, doesn't want to accept that role, well, might have to move on. We got Gerald McCoy locked up. We need Dwayne Brown. Our veterans might as well keep on. And that's probably the one positive here is, is I, I can try to re-sign our own players to the initial contracts. I'm not going to do anything ridiculous because I don't want to just you know strictly abuse the fact that there is no salary cap on. But um, you know, anytime someone saw it like this, we'll just give them a contract. Let's see here. Andy Lee, three-year deal. Is that good? Oh, you want more money? Kiss my ass. Kiss my butt cheeks. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of coming back, I, I think we might give Eli one more offer. But, but he's probably pretty upset that we just benched him for James Winston. Getting benched for James Winston is probably not how Eli Manning thought this week was going to start. He probably thought he was going to get a brand new contract. But we're 1-5-1. One, and one. Change needs to happen. Let's see what Jameis Winston can do here in the 2017 season. And at the end of the year, uh, more of the same. 4-11. and 11. We're, we're still very much a team that needs to find their identity, needs to rebuild. So it is kind of good that we are taking this rebuild approach. Versus, say, Pink says that would just take that much longer. The bad news, it doesn't really feel like Jameis Winston did a whole lot over what we were getting out of Eli Manning. Um, but we did find out Judas Mister can't handle superstar dev, which is good. We could probably bump him up here. And have him take over for Garcon. Hell, I can have him probably even take over for Josh Gordon. So at least, you know, we got some very valuable assets from that draft last season. But there's more questions to answer at the quarterback spot, which is less than ideal. Looking at the stats here, let's see. So uh, they, mostly, they, both, they basically both played half a season. It's just not explosive enough. They're not turning the ball over, which is fine, which is kind of anti Jameis Winston. But they're also not being prolific enough. That's not good. Uh, McCaffrey is a rookie. That's also pretty damn disappointing. Would have been nice even just for eight more yards, going to 1,000. But 992 and 7. Okay. I mean, what's your chip in receiving? 300 all purpose yards. And McCaffrey is an all purpose guy. You know, 1,200 yards. Not, not bad. Uh, in terms of receptions, 1,000 yards. Devontae Adams, nine touchdowns. We got 700 yards. Only one touchdown for Andre Johnson. 660 and 7 here for the legend, Jason Witten. No signs of slowing down. Aging like a fine wine. Defensively, Luke Keekley, tackle machine, 10 TFLs to go with it. Sacks, we still have no sacks. Makes that whole, you know, not sucking enough to get that number one pick last year to get Miles Garrett in the draft. Sting that much more. Uh, Kyle Fuller had four picks, though, which was, you know, pretty solid. How many? I just want to see how many sacks Miles Garrett got. If he was even playing. Did he, he didn't even play? They trade. He didn't even play. They drafted him, and he didn't even play. Oh, brutal. Um. So yeah, Jared Goff was the MVP. Why is Dak Prescott on the Eagles? This is ridiculous. In the AFC, did the did the did, do we have anyone that won an award? Well, of course, Deshaun Watson in Chip Kelly's system is gonna be terrifying. I'm sure Hawaii's just gonna keep on without missing a beat, being the best team, maybe pound for pound in the league. Caffrey, number four for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Rookie of the Year went to Adore Jackson. We had nobody. Looking at the rest of the wards for any Houston Oilers. None to be seen. Yeah. Let's, just, let's try to end this episode on a high note. Let's get into that draft and maybe, just maybe, have a massive decision to make at the quarterback spot. You know, we pretty much at this point, we have the third pick. And we're not happy with our quarterbacks. You pretty much have to throw the overalls out the window because they're not playing to their overalls. James Winston is not playing like a superstar to have young quarterback. Eli Manning is not playing like an 89 overall quarterback. So we might have to make a splash here and maybe bring in another face to come in and compete to be our franchise guy because it's just feeling like, you know, Eli has nothing left in the tank and James Winston's not a franchise quarterback. So I have decided it's probably just best to let Eli Manning walk. That does not really speak necessarily to our confidence in Jameis Winston, but 
you had to make a call, and Eli clearly wasn't getting the job done. We gave him a season and a half, and we were always you know, one of the worst teams in the league. But that doesn't mean we're not spending money. I'm looking to pay back another trip down Nostalgia Lane. It worked last year by bringing in Andre Johnson. Might as well bring back Albert Hainsworth. Literally was here, year one, from the starting point with the Houston Oilers. The fact that he's still in the league, the fact that we still do need a D-tackle to pair with Gerald McCoy. Let's see if we can do that. And then we got lights out, the best edge rusher that we've had in this series. He's 34. It's near the end of the road. Brian Cox Jr. is our starter. You know, we might not get him. There's a lot of other competitive bids there from Carolina, from the Marshalls. But I feel like, you know, let's at least try and just you know, put our line out there. See if he bites. And much like last season, where we got our, you know, nostalgia player and missed out on the impact playmaker with David DeCastro. Same thing here. We got Albert Hainsworth making his return. But John Merriman probably wants to chase rings. Doesn't want any part of this rebuild. Don't necessarily blame him, but again, you know, kind of handicapping ourselves with no salary cap and me not even wanting to abuse the system in free agency. So let's just really hope that we can build the team through the 2018 NFL Draft. So for the 2018 Draft, we have the number three overall pick. Let's just get through Tampa and Indy to figure out who we can have our chance at. Pick number one, Baker Mayfield off the board. New franchise quarterback in Tampa. Pick number two for the Colts. Denzel Ward off the board, 81 overall. That's probably the best player in the draft. So we are at pick three. Do we just keep do we just keep drafting running backs? Um, so for quarterback, I mean, obviously Lamar's there. We really want Lamar Jackson to be our quarterback. Uh, let, let's kind of weigh our options here because in terms of first round, keeping it within the first round, um, yeah, definitely Quentin Nelson is in that conversation. Not so much Bradley Chubb. Don't really need a D-tackle, especially being able to get Albert Hainsworth, even just for one year. Uh, there's some great options at linebacker. Edmonds, Van Der Esch would be dope if we can get Darius Leonard. Huge fan of my YouTube channel in the second round. That'll probably be our second round target if he's still there. Jai Alexander's an absolute baller. Minka's a baller. Derwin James is, hell yeah, a baller. Um, in terms of outright need, Quentin Nelson's probably the best, but I'm not happy with, you know, it's, it's like right now. Do you want Jameis Winston to be your quarterback? Like a Jameis Winston that's pre, like, oh, he kind of sucks for Tampa. Or Lamar Jackson. I'm a Lamar Jackson homer. Let's do it. Draft and Lamar. Oh, no. Why? What? 66? 66? Oh, that's brutal. And then, of course, right before we pick, Darius Leonard goes off the board. Sensational. Absolutely sensational. Okay, we have to go on the offensive line. Pretty much at this point, I, I got to just... I'm not about cheesing. I have to get the best lineman possible because our O-line is horrific. So uh, it actually might end up being Connor Williams. Braden Smith's pretty good. O'Neal's good. Uh, we won't break the rules. We'll get a guard. We'll get Braden Smith. Should be in like the 70s. Hey, it is. Number 28, Drew Talent. Getting him at 35. Solid lineman would be pretty dope if we can get, say, Orlando Brown Jr. Zeus Jr. in the third. Zeus is a baller. 72 hidden dev. Number 13, Drew Talent. Getting that at pick 67. How was Lamar Jackson a 66? When, was he, when were these draft class ratings updated? So we filled out our draft here in 2018. Uh, <laughs> can't get over that. I mean, I'm probably just going to start him anyways. We're going to let Lamar hit the ground running. Uh, but we got Braden Smith, we saw, we got Orlando Brown. Outside of that, we got Avante Maddox, 67, normal in the fourth round. He's corner on the Eagles, that's solid. Same with Trey Flowers, solid pick. I think he's actually a starter on Seattle. No respect for Boston Scott. Eagles legend, only a 52. We only had one running back on the roster before that. So then I decided to double dip in free agency, get, in my opinion, I thought was going to be the best UDFA. Philip Lindsay, the running back, starting running back for the Denver Broncos right now in real life. 57 overall is pretty rough, but he does have a hidden dread trait, which helps out just a little bit. 94 speed, 94 acceleration. Uh, I mean, you know, let's be honest, we got Christian McCaffrey. It's going to be the Christian McCaffrey show, but to spell him with a guy like Lindsay could be a long-term play. But helped out the O-line a little bit, and hey, we're going to try and make this Lamar Jackson thing work. To get another, we might as well actually just look at the rest of the NFL while we're here. Uh, Quentin Nelson was a 79 overall. 
going to the Giants. Roquan Smith going to the Chiefs. Saquon going to the Bears. Vita Vea going to the Cleveland Browns. Tremaine Edmonds going to the Dallas Cowboys. Derwin James to the Jets. Van Der Esch to the Rams. Minka to the Redskins. Jair Alexander to the Panthers. Um, in terms of like big first round, Sam Darnold going to the Minnesota Vikings. Then we'll say going into the second round, looking at the... Oh, that's so annoying that we missed out on Darius Leonard. Literally the pick before us. Uh, Fred Warner going to the Bucks. We got Shaquem Griffin going to the Panthers. Obviously, Panthers, outstanding organization. We left them in a great spot. Clearly a high-value pick right there. Um, I mean, there's no real notables actually down in this, this part of the draft. I, I'm literally flabbergasted with Lamar Jackson. Sorry, let me recompose myself here. So this point is where we're going to call it. <laughs> Still plenty of rebuild left for the final three years. Which will be dropping for you guys probably, hopefully not this late tomorrow. But I still got a lot of work that I got to get done. Um, but I'm actually now, now, this went from like, all right, let's see what we can do. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to be on a mission to make Lamar Jackson good. So I'm glad. I'm actually, now I'm coming to, I'm coping with the fact that Lamar got absolutely robbed here. And now I have a mission that before I leave Madden 20, at least in this flashback world, I'm going to make Lamar Jackson a god. That is my promise. Um... That's too, I mean, we still work in progress. Definitely still a work in progress. But I am optimistic that we're going to continue to develop. Tyron Matthew went up Dev Trait. He's now a superstar X Factor. Happy with that. Jaquiski Tart went up a Dev Trait. So, I mean, the team is still generally trending in the right direction. It's just all about finding that stability at the quarterback spot. And I think we might have that in Lamar Jackson. But, like I said, that will do it for today. We will be back tomorrow with our final Madden 20 video. And let's see if we can make Lamar Jackson a god. But that does it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, if your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until tomorrow, see you then. Peace out.